In this lesson, I am going to discuss extending and shrinking a set to form a basis. Let us recall that if S spans an n-dimensional vector space V, then S has at least n elements. Suppose this contains the set of all spanning sets. So it contains spanning sets. This statement is saying that the smallest spanning set contains n elements. Now suppose that we get a spanning set here, let's call it S, and assume that S contains more than n elements. n is the dimension of your vector space V. What we want to do in this lesson is to transform this spanning set here so that it will still span your vector space V, but we want it to have n elements. Recall that if we have a spanning set and it contains n elements, then automatically that will form a basis for your vector space. That is actually a theorem. We can do that. For any spanning set for V, we can always cut it down by deleting appropriate vectors to form a basis for V. What do you mean here by appropriate vectors? When I say that I want to delete appropriate vectors, these are the redundant vectors in your spanning set. That means that these vectors here are just linear combinations of the other vectors. Hence, if you delete those vectors which are linear combinations of the other vectors, then the resulting set will still span your vector space. Let us consider this example. We have 1, 2, 1, 1, and 2, 3. It is already given that it is a spanning set for V. Of course, for V, which in this case is R2, the dimension is equal to 2. Hence, we know that this is not a basis. We have to delete one vector here. Which of these three vectors are we going to delete? Notice here that the third vector, 2, 3, is just the sum of the first two vectors. Hence, since it is just a linear combination of your first two vectors, a basis for this would just be 1, 2, and 1, 1. We can delete this redundant vector since it is just a linear combination of these two. Now, of course, it's not always the case that you can easily see that a vector is a linear combination of the other vectors. So hence, I will give you step-by-step -step procedure on how to determine which among your vectors are your redundant vectors. Suppose that we have a set S and it contains M elements and S spans V, and this M is greater than N. Hence, S is not a basis for V. Because in the first place, if the number of elements is more than the dimension of your space, we know that it is linearly dependent. Thus, if it is linearly dependent, when you form this vector equation, A1V1 up to AMVM, there will be non-trivial solutions. Recall also that in a system of linear equations, it's either you have exactly one solution, infinitely many solutions, or no solutions at all. But since you have non-trivial solutions, this means that you have infinitely many solutions. And if you have infinitely many solutions, what can you now say about the augmented matrix that will be formed? If you have infinitely many solutions, then you are sure to have free variables. How do you determine the free variables just by looking at your augmented matrix? You look at your non-pivot columns. So here, for our second step, once we have formed the vector equation, we form the augmented matrix and reduce it to row echelon form. As I have mentioned earlier, there will be non-pivot columns. Let's say this column and this column, the non-pivot columns would correspond to your redundant vectors. Hence, you have to delete the corresponding vectors. The vectors that will remain will correspond to your pivot columns. And those will form a basis for your vector space. Let me just summarize what I just said. The vectors corresponding to the pivot column will form a basis. To illustrate this, let us consider this set. Let us solve this using the steps that I previously discussed. 
First, let us form the equation A1V1 plus A2V2 plus A3V3 equals the zero vector. What is the zero vector in R2? That is your column matrix 0, 0. Recall that the resulting augmented matrix from this system of linear equations would just be this one. The columns are just the column vectors over here. Now, if you transform this into its REF, you will get 1, 1, 2, 0, 1, 1. And of course, you have 0 over here. Your pivot columns will be the first and the second column. Recall that this one would correspond to the variable a1, a2, and a3. The fact that the third column has no pivots on it, that means that a3 is a free variable. Since a3 is a free variable, you are free to choose what value you can give for a3. If you take a3 to be equal to 1, then we would get that a2 is equal to negative 1 and a1 would also be equal to negative 1. If you switch it back to this vector equation, we will have that v3 is equal to v1 plus v2. Hence, v3 is a linear combination of v1 and v2 if you were not able to see it previously. Let me just show you why the corresponding vectors would form a basis. Recall that A1 would be the coefficient for V1, A2 would be the coefficient for V2, and A3 would be the coefficient for V3. So hence, you can see here that the pivot columns corresponding to V1 and V2 will form a basis, and the non-pivot columns, the corresponding vectors for that, for that would be your redundant vectors. Your basis here would just be V1, which in this case is 1, 2, and V2, which is 1, 1. Another example, we want to find a basis of P3 in this spanning set. We have how many elements? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. What is the dimension of P3? The dimension of P3 is equal to 4. Again, we will form the equation A1V1 plus A2V2 plus A3V3 plus A4V4 is equal to the zero vector. What is the zero vector in P3? The zero polynomial. What would be the resulting coefficient matrix if that is the case? Recall again that this will just be the coefficients for 1, x, x squared, and x cubed. For the first vector, V1, I just have 1 here and 0 everywhere. For V2, x plus x squared, so I have 0, 1, 1, 0. 1 times x plus 1 times x squared. For V3, we have 2x, so 0, 2 times x minus 3x squared, 0. For V4, 1 plus 3x minus 2x squared, and then 0. And lastly, you have x cubed. That would be the corresponding augmented matrix. Let us transform this into its REF. Verify that you will get its REF to be this matrix. And our pivots are here. So from here, what would be your basis? Your basis would be corresponding to V1, V2, V3, and V5. So that's 1, x plus x squared, 2x minus 3x squared, and x cubed. Let us just verify that V4 is really a redundant vector, let us show that it can be written as a linear combination of V1, V2, V3, and V5. Since A4 is a free variable, we can take A4 to be equal to 1. Well, you can solve for A1, A2, A3, A4, and A5. But the point is, once you have solved for that, you can see that V4 
would be equal to negative a1 v1 negative a2 so indeed v4 is really a linear combination of these four vectors here let us consider this example we want to find the dimension of the following subspace of r3 what is the first thing that we have to do here we have to separate all the variables so i have a negative 2a 2a plus 2b minus 3b 4b then 0 4c 0 for d negative d 5d 2d and lastly we have e 0 0 e hence an arbitrary element in w can be written in this form a times 1 negative 2 2 plus b 2 negative 3 4 plus c 0 4 0 plus d negative 1 5 2 plus e 0 0 1 this tells us that this five vectors here would be a spanning set for w since this is a spanning set we now turn it into a basis here are the column vectors that we obtained a while ago let us now form the resulting augmented matrix we will just turn all of this into a matrix this will form their columns i will no longer write the zero over here i will just be looking at your coefficient matrix let us transform this to its ref here is our matrix in its low echelon form our pivot columns are as follows one two and three so therefore this two columns this corresponds to a4 to the variables a4 and a5 that we were solving they would be free variables and since they would be free variables our basis would just be the vectors corresponding to v1 v2 and v3 1 negative 2 2 2 negative 3 4 and Zero four zero. Again, let me just write here that A4 and A5 are free variables. Recall that we are coming from this vector equation. If we want to solve for V4, I will just take my free variable A4 to 1 and the other free variable A5 to be equal to 0. So hence, you will have that V4 is a linear combination of the three other vectors if you want to solve for v5 similarly you now take a5 to be equal to 1 because you are free to choose whatever you want for a5 that is a free variable and you take a4 to be 0 and v5 would also be written in this way now take note that the ai's that i obtained here this A1, A2, A3 is different from the A1, A2, and A3 that you will get here. I just did not solve for it. I leave it up to you to do that. But the point is that I wanted to really show you that V4 and V5 is a linear combination of these three other vectors. Let us recall the following fact that we had in our previous lessons. If S is a linearly independent set in an n-dimensional vector space, then S has at most n elements this is saying that the biggest linearly independent set in v has n elements but again if you are a linearly independent set and the number of elements is the same as the dimension of your vector space then it will form a basis for v so what we want to do for the remaining parts of this lesson is that given a set s which is linearly independent 
And suppose that it has m elements where m is less than the dimension of v. What we want to do is to add vectors, appropriate vectors, such that their new set will now have n vectors and it is still linearly independent. So that the resulting set will form a basis for v. That is a theorem. Any linearly independent subset of a vector space can be enlarged to a basis for V by adding appropriate vectors. Again, I have this word appropriate. What do we mean by appropriate vectors? I will explain it in the next slide. Here are the steps to enlarge a linearly independent set to a basis. First, you append vectors from a known basis. What will be the known basis? These are your standard basis. And since you have already extended the set to a spanning set, we will now go back to just what we have discussed. We will turn this spanning set into a basis by deleting other vectors. To illustrate that, suppose we have these two vectors, 1, negative 2, 3, and 0, 5, 3. We want to extend this to a linearly independent set. So first, I will append my standard basis for R3. 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, and 0, 0, 1. Since this is already a basis, therefore this spans V. And if you add these vectors here, this entire set would still span V. Correct? Now what we want to do is to delete. You don't need all of these vectors here. Of course, you do not want to delete this vectors over here you could have just said why not make this 1 0 0 0 1 0 0 0 1 remember we want to retain these two vectors all right so do not delete this let us form the resulting matrix we have 1 negative 2 3 0 5 negative 3 1 0 0 0 1 0 and 0 0 1 let us transform it into its REF. We will get the following matrix. And therefore, our pivots are here, here, and here. So therefore, we will retain these three vectors, and your basis would be this set.